I remember when I was a young boy in grade school, in a Catholic grade school, that there was something pulling it. You know, vocations for me start on the inside. Mm -hmm. And there was something sort of tugging at my heart. And I noticed that when I was in specific places with specific people, I was drawn to them. And I had uh, lots of people who encouraged me. But I understood the importance of prayer. And my relationship with Jesus, my relationship with God, uh, unfolded, helped me to understand uh, the, the many vocations that I've had. I've been a major in the Army. Uh, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse anesthetist. I'm a father, a poppy, and a deacon. I believe that it's important at some point every single day, even if it's when we're lying in bed at night in the quiet and stillness of the night, to pray to God and to open our hearts and open our minds to pay attention to life because that's where we see God's vocation for us. We chose marriage because we loved each other and then it becomes a vocation. I think we can learn every day from somebody in our world about what makes a good marriage, what makes a good family. Marriage Marriage isn't just the word marriage. It, it's it's a it's a life it's a vocation it's a lifestyle. It's a it's a constant every day, getting up, being aware of your partner, of trying to make the day good for your partner, to share, to love, to to support, to provide a need. Um, every vocation is a service to someone and all for the glory of God. I think the number one reason I knew God was calling me to be a priest was I could feel it deep in my heart, a desire to do it. I think what influenced me to enter the seminary was seeing so many great priests in our diocese, just doing the things that priests do, offering mass, preaching, uh, accompanying people when they're sick or when they're The best part about being a seminarian is getting to meet people where they are uh, at all different stages of life, getting to see their journey of faith. I can tell you that my favorite thing here is probably coming to the school and visiting the kids and seeing how happy and joyful they are how much they're learning. My advice for students here at OLMC is first to pray. To pray to God about your journey in life. To keep an open heart. That's my second piece of advice. Keep an open heart. You know, God wants what's best for you and your vocation is ultimately about making that happen. And you don't necessarily know what's going to make you most happy, but God does. And so let Him lead you, let Him guide you, keeping an open heart, keeping an open mind to what He wants. My vocation to the priesthood took a really long time because when I first started to sense a calling to ministry, to ordain ministry, I wasn't even Catholic. Uh, I was in high school. And really in college, the first couple of years of college, I had a very profound sense that God was calling me to full-time ministry. And then that eventually, over about a 15-year period, uh, became um, uh, a calling first to become Catholic. It was just this, this sense all along different points of my life um, that God loved me and that He loved other people and He was asking me to use whatever capacities I had to help other people. And so the more um, I experienced God present in my life and the more I understood the Catholic understanding of who Jesus fully is, it became clearer and clearer that that was the Jesus who was speaking to me. I think the most important thing is to stay open. Um, very often, even when, when folks are young, they have a sense of, you know, am I called to be religious? Am I called to be a priest? Am I called to marriage? What am I called to? And especially when you get, um, as you get older, you know, life 
uh, changes us, we have different experiences, we grow up in different ways. But if Jesus is calling us to a priestly vocation or, or religious vocation or to marriage, um, he asks us to be open to him. Uh, all Christian Catholic men and women should be open to religious vocations. You know, there's almost two discernment levels um, where I went through discernment of do I want to be a priest or do I want to enter the married life and uh, and I prayed. I spent a lot of time in my young adult years um, praying about it and, and thinking about it um, and discerning. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, there came a point where I actually, where I met Claire um, and very quickly fell in love with her. And, uh, and I found when I spent time with her, she actually um, challenged me and encouraged me to go grow closer in my faith because I felt as though we both were bringing each other closer to Christ. When I met Austin, it just seemed like that was where I was being called and um, I always wanted to have my own children, so mm -hmm. I think that was a desire that God placed in my heart. And it surprised me how hard it how hard it is because when you love someone, you think it's going to be so easy, and it is great, but it's also very challenging. And prayer and um, being open to God's will in your life, whatever that may be. Um, you know, I think that, and patience, I think patience plays a big role. Um, that oftentimes we want to know right away, who am I going to marry? Or what am I going to be when I grow up? But to allow each day to open its, its doors for you. Um, and I think, you know, I found um, when I started praying for God to show me my mission in life, that, um, very, that God answers prayers and, and he starts to show you more clearly where he wants you to be. In your prayer, uh, just trust that God's will is the perfect path and is the source of all goodness. Um, What's the best part of your vocation? Kids! Here. <laughs> here. That gives me strength. Well, the obvious answer is Jesus. Jesus called me to live out this vocation, so he's going to give me everything I need for it. So I think one of the things that surprises me most in my vocation is the the way that the ways that God can speak to us. You know, if you think about God, He is invisible, He is omnipotent, He's divine. There's almost no reason to think that He could communicate with us, but He does in a million ways. So when He calls, when He calls someone to marriage or to for me, when He called me to religious life, it was so clear what He was asking, which is amazing and surprising to me. And I think he speaks in so many different ways. Uh, obviously, he can speak through his creation, through beauty, often through other people, through scripture, through the mass. So I just think one of the things that's always new and surprising, I think, is the way that God finds a way to speak to us every day if, we, if we'll listen to him. My advice for you, for children, for students, is to follow Jesus no matter what he asks of you. He's the one who designed your heart. He designed your life. Uh, he designed your vocation, and we're made to be happy, and he knows that, and that's what he wants for us. So, follow him. As soon as you know what he wants you to do, say yes and follow him. He will lead you to happiness.